And we continue now with the author of The Politician, former John Edwards aide, Andrew Young. All right, so eventually everyone around the candidate, John Edwards, knows this is going on. He's I, I wouldn't say everyone. A lot but, of people. But, but the people in the inner circle, yes. They all knew. All right, and so one by one, he's sort of pushing them out, getting rid of them. He pulls it off. For that, that's everybody says to me, you know, how did you think that, that you could pull this off? The crazy thing about this is, Riel moved into our house in September uh, until he walked into the Beverly Hilton in July, July 22nd. The mainstream media didn't cover it, didn't pick it up. And at that point in July, he was the leading contender for VP or Attorney General in all, almost all the polls that you looked at in terms of helping Obama. Yeah. All right, so you got to this point where you've been covering for him, you've been facilitating this, uh, you stay with him, mm -hmm. and right. then he comes to you and describe the moment when he comes up with this scheme that you're going to be the father of his <laughs> child. You're going to be the one having the affair with Riel Hunter. I'm, I'm glad my wife is not in here. I just met your wife, by the way, and <laughs> yeah, I bet you are. Uh, we were, it's, it's, it's a little, uh, if you can make a humorous story in this, we were at the PetSmart buying a turtle aquarium for our kids. And he calls me, and he had five or six numbers that he would use to call me. And I walk outside, and I'm sitting on the curb. And uh, he makes his usual pitch, you know, how are the kids, you know, acting concerned. And then, then he starts to talk about the National Enquirer had been at my house the night before, pre, uh, peeking in the window, and the sheriff had come, and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I haven't worked for him as long as I did. I usually could kind of predict where he was going to go. And so I walk out and I sit in the, in the minivan and uh, there, was a, there was the newest Newsweek that had just come out and it said the Dark Horse had him on the cover. And the article on the inside was, uh, I'm going to tell the truth. And it outlined how uh, after what had happened with, with Gore in, in 2000 and Kerry in 2004, it outlined how Iowa and New Hampshire, they were not going to risk a historic election on Barack or Hillary they were going to go for somebody who was tremendously popular like Edwards and they outlined how he could win. So Edwards used that and then he segged into the, you know, good versus evil, you know, let's get rid of Karl Rove and Dick Cheney, uh, getting the boys out of Iraq, on and on and on. And he made the argument that, that he was the only viable Democrat that could win. And and he closed with one that was just the clincher. And, and you have to understand, John Edwards is not your average Joe. This is one of the most persuasive trial lawyers and politicians around. I mean, he, this guy can sell ice to Eskimos. To some people, maybe not to you, okay. but to a lot of people. Right. Uh, when he's on, when he's on. And he's very persuasive. You have to admit, at, at minimum, he's very persuasive. I, I was never that impressed, but I'm, I'm listening okay. to your story. Okay, okay. And... At the end of it, he threw in the closer. Elizabeth is dying of cancer. She's going to die in very short order. And we need to give the, give the press what they want. And if we give them a story of two, two staffers having an affair, they don't care about you, Andrew. They care about me. And this will go away if we just give them that story. And as soon as Elizabeth dies, you'll come back to being my right-hand man and everything will be fine. Now, in that initial request, and people are confused about this, I didn't ask for anything in return. But, it, but he says to you, he, they release a statement, you claim paternity. Exactly. You had to go to your wife and tell her, by the way, I'm doing this for my friend John, I'm gonna he had an affair, and I'm gonna claim that I'm the father. It's even more bizarre than Let that. Let me tell you something, Mrs. Hannity would not go for that, all right? <laughs> that would not fly in the Hannity household. It, it, it's even more bizarre than that. We were in, uh, McDon in the McDonald's drive through going through the first pay window and the second pay, pay window when I finally figured out I had to say something. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was between those two windows that I told her that. So And all right, so then, then you accepted this deal and you, the press not, release not went out. Not then. Uh, we went home and 12 hours later, uh, mm -hmm. Riel, uh, the senator, and I and Sherry were on speakerphone and discussed it. All right. Um, what was Riel Hunter like? You describe her as a pretty, you, you always thought she was threatening to expose right. this. You didn't really expose, uh, uh, describe her as somebody that was, let's say, stable. She was the polar opposite of Elizabeth. I mean, she was a new age spiritualist. Uh, she 
truly believe that the baby was the reincarnation of a Buddhist monk uh, that had died just before uh, the baby was born. And the baby was a combination of the senator's charisma and intellect and her new age spiritualism. And it was sent here not just to save the United States, but the universe. Is it true that Bill Clinton called John Edwards and said, how did you get caught? It was better than that, uh, the, yeah. from, from what he told me. Uh, he told me that uh, uh, Senator Clinton called uh, Mrs. Edwards and expressed regret and love. Barack Obama, same thing. Uh, Bill Clinton called both of them, but when he got on the phone with, uh, with Edwards, he said, he said, well, he said two things. Man, if I'd, if I'd hired John uh, Andrew Young, I'd still be in office. <laughs> and, oh, secondly, and secondly, what you just said. So. Um, well, I mean, any, anything you, what is the big lesson you learned in this? What is, what, what is the lesson? Did you, did you get sucked into a cult? Were you just blinded by your own ambition? Was it a combination? How did you allow yourself to sort of put these blinders on and compromise your values this way? I mean, the first part of the book explains that. You know, I, 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 when I was very young, I went through a bankruptcy, went through some tough times. And, and when I had three kids and a wife to support, I was desperate to hold on to my job. But the thing that I learned coming out of this is I already had everything I needed. Uh, my wife and my kids are the ones that have stuck by me and got me through this. All right. Andrew, appreciate it. Fascinating read. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. And